All right, today's challenge is to talk about iPhone and pixel photography and not have it turn into a fanboy battle. We'll see how I do. Hi everyone and welcome back to A Better Computer. My name is Matt and for those who don't know me and haven't known me for a long time, I am an Apple fan. I like Apple's products in general. I carry an iPhone with me. Uh, it's just the platform that I prefer and I really like the camera on the iPhone. But I do also always make sure I own a relatively new, uh, pretty new usually, Pixel phone or Android phone of some sort because I want to keep up with what's going on in the Android side of the world. And so right now that means I have a Pixel 4 that I got uh, in 2019 and I've been using just because it's kind of a secondary phone. I swap it in, swap my SIM card in there every once in a while to try it out. That's not super important, but I guess what I'm saying is I have an Android phone around because I like to keep up with Android and stories that I saw recently really make me happy that I did that and specifically that I own a Pixel because Google added a new feature to the camera app that I wanted to try out. So HDR and night photography are two of the biggest camera features that have been heralded as revolutions in smartphone photography in recent years, and for good reason. Uh, Apple and Google specifically have done incredible work at getting remarkable photos in horrible situations out of tiny, tiny image sensors on our phones. It's incredible what we're able to do. So the way HDR and night photography works on the Pixel devices, and it's going to be basically the same story on iPhones, is it takes many photos all at once, and all of these photos are basically, it's basically taking the same shot over and over and over again, and is underexposing for each of those, because it's just not going to get all the detail, uh, and you're holding it, you're probably doing it handheld, so it's not going to be able to keep the shutter open for long, otherwise you're going to get things that are all blurry and stuff. So it wants to have a crisp picture, but have a lot of detail. So it takes a bunch of photos at once, it combines them all together intelligently, and then it cranks the exposure. And because it has so many samples of underexposed images, it makes it, it's kind of magic, <laughs> it seems like, but basically it makes it so that when they crank the exposure, kind of like going into Lightroom and just pulling the exposure slider to the right, they have enough information that they're able to retain detail in the dark spots while not blowing out the highlights. So that's how HDR photos work. Uh, that's how night mode works. Night mode has a little extra stuff in there with like longer exposures, but it's generally the same idea. And so that's how it's worked for pixels for years. Now this is different from how it traditionally works with cameras like the one I'm shooting on right now. In those cases, you would set up your camera, typically on a tripod, and you would put it into this bracketing mode. And that bracketing mode would make it so you hold down the shutter for like a second or two. It would take multiple photos, say three photos, and they would be taken at different shutter speeds or different exposure times. And then you'd have some photos that are overexposed, some that are under, and some that are normal. Then once you get to your editing software, you could select those photos, all three of them, five of them, seven of them, whatever your camera did, and then it can merge those into one HDR photo and it basically makes it so the whole thing is exposed normally. Now this is a manual process, it's tricky. Like I said, you typically use a tripod to do this. It's frankly magic that you can just hold up your phone with your shaky human hands, <laughs> hit the button and it just works. That's incredible. Um, but this bracketing system that is used in traditional cameras is a little different and it has some benefits. I mentioned that they have these 10 photos or so that are underexposed and when they crank the exposure, they get a lot of that detail, but they don't get all of it, especially in darker areas of HDR photos. You're more likely to see noise because even though they had more detail than they did on the sensor with one shot, it's still not enough. And so it still is going to be noisy. It's not going to be perfect. And so the fact that they're able to bring bracketing into this means that those 10 photos they took that were underexposed, now a couple of those will actually be normally exposed or overexposed, and it's going to be able to use those to get more information from the shadowy areas and put it into the shot. And so what this is going to mean for you is that when you take an HDR photo, your shadows are going to be less noisy. So that's enough theory about it. I wanted to see how this actually works in the real world. And so I wanted to stress test this feature. So I went out and took some photos at night to see how this feature worked because this does work in night mode on the Pixel and see, does this make the Pixel take notably better photos than the iPhone at night? Am I gonna see less noise in the shadows? Am I gonna see more detail in the darker parts of the image? So that's what we're gonna find out right now. I'm gonna go through them real quick and then we'll see the differences. I'll be back here to give you my conclusions. Okay, so we've got three photos to take a look at. I've got one of a street sign, one of a tree, and one of a house. 
And again, these are all handheld. Uh, iPhone will always be on the left, Pixel will always be on the right. And yeah, let's take a look at this first one. Uh, right off the bat, you can see a different color. We're not really looking at that, but yeah, Pixels have a bluer tone with their night shots. Uh, iPhones are a little more yellowish. Uh, that's a personal preference, which one you like. I prefer the Pixel a little bit, uh, but that's just me. And yeah, we can kind of see uh, they look generally the same, uh, but let's look in some of the details and see if we can see a difference. So the sign itself is nicely lit and is kind of the brightest thing in the shot. And so they're pretty similar. I think the iPhone is a little sharper here, uh, but not by much. And the Pixel is doing fine. Uh, we're really zoomed in a ton at this point. Uh, but let's look at a different spot uh, up here where it's a little darker. Uh, you can see, again, the iPhone on the left and the Pixel on the right. There's less noise in the Pixel one, so that might be part of bracketing. Hard to say exactly. Uh, but yeah, I think there's a little less noise here. You can see this kind of like watercolor styling that you kind of get on clouds and stuff in iPhone shots, especially in low light. Uh, that looks, it looks okay. Uh, I can see why they do it, but you definitely start to notice it once you're looking for it. It's a little less so on the Pixel. Uh, but yeah, the Pixel I think is a little better here, not by a ton, um, but yeah, a little better on the Pixel probably. And then down here, this is where I think we're seeing bracketing potentially making a big difference. So on the iPhone, all of this is really crushed. All the blacks are just nothing. Uh, I did try in Lightroom to increase uh, the shadows and the black areas, and the state is just gone. It's just not there. Whereas on the Pixel, we're getting a lot more detail in the grass in that same shadowy area. So definitely, I think this is a good example of exactly what Google said we would see is more detail, less noise in the dark spots of images. So let's take a look at the next one. So this is a tree. Uh, this one looks more or better lit, I should say. And you can kind of see this as well. You can see down here in the grass, the grass in the shadow is really dark here. Uh, whereas over here, you can see the grass much better defined. Uh, so let's go into some details as well. Let's go up to the top. Uh, you can see that painterly watercolor quality of the clouds on the iPhone uh, versus a little less so way, way blue or two over on the pixel. And yeah, detail is actually about the same here. I can't really see a notable difference. Uh, there's maybe a little less noise uh, in the Pixel one, but it's it's really a wash in my opinion. And if we go over here, uh, this is where you can see some of the difference as well. Uh, we can see big spots over here in the street, uh, which is kind of a, just a texture. It's pretty smooth, especially in the darkness. Uh, whereas on the Pixel, maybe you could say this is a little noisier, but it definitely seems more detailed. And then back here, you can kind of see this wooden fence. You can see that it's like that. You can see there's actually a chain link fence right next to it as well. On the iPhone, that detail is just lost. So let's look at the last one then. And we've got the, again, iPhone and Pixel on the right here. And so you can see the bluer tone, from afar, everything looks about the same. So let's zoom in a bit. And so here, uh, they're similar. Um, I do think there's less noise, less kind of uh, artifacting in some of these areas. Uh, in the shadowy bit of the roof, uh, it's about the same. Uh, down here in the siding, they're a little different, but I don't know if one's better than the other. This one actually might be a little blurred, whereas this one's a little more defined. Up here, this is definitely more defined than it is on the Pixel. And then the addresses, uh, they're a little different, but I don't know if one's markedly better than the other. So let's go to the last one. And here we go. We have some really dark areas. And again, you can see it's not like particularly beautiful, but there is definitely more here than you get on the iPhone. All of this is just black. Again, I went into Lightroom to try to raise this up and there's nothing there. It's it's just black pixels. Whereas you do have some texture here. You can kind of see the tree go down all the way to the ground, whereas you lose the tree on the iPhone. These uh, little like lawn chairs here, they're much more defined on the pixel over here on the right than the iPhone on the left. So I'm definitely seeing some benefits to bracketing, I think, in the Pixel. Uh, again, because a few years ago, or about a year and a half ago, when I tested these originally, this was actually the iPhone 11 at that point, I thought the iPhone was a little better than the Pixel at these handheld knife mode shots. And right now, it looks like, on balance, especially at the things that we're looking to see, are they improved because of bracketing? I think that they are. Okay, so my takeaway is these phones are so freaking close. <laughs> They're so, so similar in quality. We're really, really, really splitting hairs at this point. I think that in general, I think the Pixel did do better in some of those very specific situations where bracketing is supposed to help. We saw it in the grass. We saw it in some of those darker areas, those lawn chairs. 
we definitely saw instances where the pixel was getting more detail out of some darker spots in the image than the iPhone was. I think the iPhone still had the advantage in especially lighter areas uh, where it did get a little crisper in some spots, but it was really a toss up and it wasn't a clear win for either of them. It wasn't like a blowout. Uh, you may have your preferences. You may think that the yellowish colors on the iPhone invalidate it and the pixel is gonna be better just because it has cooler color tones and that's fine. But yeah, in terms of detail, which is what I was trying to look at, I don't think they're that far off, but I do think the Pixel did notably better in a couple spots. So it's not a barn burner. It's not a <laughs> major, major difference between the two, but I definitely saw some improvement from the last time about a year ago when I compared these two cameras at night as well. So those are my findings. I uh, hope you found it interesting at least, and at the very least, not fanboy content. I tried very much to be fair. So if you liked it, hit the thumbs up button. If you thought I was a fanboy, I guess hit the thumbs down button, but I tried my best. <laughs> so I will see you here next time. Thank you so much for watching.